Hi, my name's Kyle. I'm one of the contributing writers to Model Airplane News Magazine, and now I'm one of the new contributing writers to RotorDrone.com. I've been doing FPV for about six years now, and uh, I write a lot about it with the magazine, so I get a lot of questions about what my FPV ground station looks like. Well, it has evolved over the years from just a tripod with the antenna on it, um, hooked up to my laptop to uh, this small compact FPV station that I have before you. So I figured I would just show everybody what my latest FPV ground station looks like and uh, maybe you can get some ideas of what you want to do with yours. All right, here we go. This is a uh, Pelican case. It is 13 by 9 and about 4 inches deep inside. Uh, I actually picked this up from a friend of mine who was uh, cleaning out his basement, so um, I figured I'd take it off his hands for him, and he was glad to give it. So, this is the outside of it. Pretty rugged, standard Pelican case. Let's look at the inside. Let me get a better look here. All right. So first of all, I have this lovely covering on here. Um, I have this on here simply so when I close it, the screen doesn't get scratched by any of the uh, instrumentation inside. So we'll go ahead and remove that, put it to the side. All right, so what we have uh, to start off with is a ready-made RC, a 10.1 inch FPV monitor. Uh, that can be found at readymaderc.com. It is a, uh, a truly a very good monitor. Uh, next, you'll see I've got a ready-made RC 5100 3-cell uh, milliamp battery that powers all the electronics inside. Uh, next, we have a battery monitor. Uh, just so I know, in case it's getting low, I don't uh, over-discharge it. Um, but it's got plenty of power, plenty of time to power everything for quite a long time. So I've never even come close to uh, getting it to a low-voltage state, but I have that there just in case. Uh, next over, we'll go to the JXD990. That is my uh, DVR. It's also used as a backup screen um, to record my videos just in case um, the dock goggles fail or the monitor fail. I can always go to this, which is separately powered uh, from the battery. So it's got its own power source uh, just in case uh, I lose my power source and I can't power anything else. I can always fly home on that. And also, it's very helpful in uh, video playback. In case you go down somewhere, uh, you're not really sure where you went down, so you can just replay the video that you've recorded onto it, see it, see it, and then maybe try and track down your aircraft from there. Uh, I've actually had to do that once, and it worked perfectly. Uh, next, we have my Fat Shark Dominator uh, FPV goggles that I use. We'll I'll take that out and put it to the side. Uh, underneath that, we have the cabling that go to the Fat Shark um, FPV goggles. I have mine cabled. I don't have it wireless, uh, just because cabling is easier and I seem to get less interference. So I've got a nice long cable uh, there to plug into my FPV goggles. Uh, the cable goes to the Eagle Eyes uh, Eagle Tree FPV station. Uh, there it gets ported out to the monitor and the goggles. Uh, so it's kind of, I use it as a splitter. Um, you can use it for all kinds of stuff, but I just use it mainly as a, as a video splitter. Uh, underneath the goggles, we have the 4-channel 900 megahertz receiver, and uh, that has an antenna that goes, that you can see maybe, it's, you can see it's routed up through uh, the case, up to the back, and then it goes all the way here and ports out the back right there, if you can see it. Now, this is my antenna that I've tucked away in there. When I want to find 900 megahertz, I just take the antenna, if I can get that screwed on there, screw it on the back, flip it up, and then there you go. I've got my 900 megahertz uh, system ready to go. Now, on the other side, I've got my DJI 5.8 gigahertz uh, receiver. Now, I've got it set up so I can only power one receiver at a time. So if I want to power the 900 megahertz receiver, I just take out the power cord. That's the wrong cord. There we go. Here's the power cord. Take that out and plug it right into the 900 megahertz. Now, when I turn on the battery, 
900 megahertz would be powered and I'd be receiving my signal on that. If I want 5.8 gigahertz, just plug that back in there, like so. Remove the battery and I've got my antenna, circular polarized antenna, ready to go for the 5.8 gigahertz. Screw that on. I've got some Velcro on the back here, you can see. And then I've got some Velcro on the top. I just place that on Velcro right there. And then there you go. That's my 5.8 gigahertz system set up. So you can see I've got both antennas up, but I'm only powering one uh, receiver at a time. Underneath here is also the controller for the monitor in case I want to use it. And all that's kind of routed all underneath the uh, foam here so you can't really see it. Um, also, I just want to note that since the monitor and the receiver antennas are on the back of the lid here, um, it, tell, it tends to tip backwards. So I've got a about a one pound weight underneath the foam here to keep it from falling backwards. So just think about that when you're, uh, when you're building yours. And we can go ahead and plug it in so you can see how it all looks. All right, plugged in. You can see the monitor there. Uh, I turned the monitor on. Obviously, it's not going to have a picture right now because I'm not hooked up to anything. And there goes that wonderful beep from the uh, from the eagle eyes, telling me that I don't have a signal. So we'll go ahead and mute that, just so it doesn't annoy us too much. And there you go. That's my system. Uh, you'd have to turn this on separately since it's separately powered. And then you're off to the races. Whichever one you want to use, 900 or uh, 5.8 gigahertz, just make sure you plug it into the right receiver. And um, there you go. And that's my system. It's small, compact, uh, pretty light, and uh, pretty durable. I've been using it for about six or seven months now, and I haven't had any trouble at all. So I'll do a short write-up of this on the site, and uh, you can go check it out. Also, I keep some of my manuals here on the side just in case I need to look up something on how to do something with the monitor. That's just a manual. Just something to keep handy. And, um, oh, and right here is actually a spare battery for my goggles. So, it's always nice to have as well. Anyway, I uh, hope you got something out of this and uh, look forward to writing more for rotodrone.com and um, putting up more videos. So, if you have any questions, just put your comments at the bottom and I will answer them as soon as I can. Thank you and have a great day.